Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to my Sunday morning step up design uh, live. And I want to welcome you on YouTube and on Facebook and my Facebook group. I'm glad that you guys could all make me the or uh, join me this morning. So this is exciting as I share some quick and easy tips for you today with watercolor. So let me just see, see if anyone, okay, I got a thumbs up, that's fabulous. If you are here, let me know where you are watching from, give me a thumbs up and uh, let me know everything is good. Uh, for today on our Sunday morning step up design, we are going to be using a beautiful bundle and I am going to show you more of that information in a second. It is called Beauty of the Deep and it is such a pretty pretty bundle and the dies are amazing. Um, for today I am switching it up a little bit because uh, for the step up design I often don't throw in watercolor techniques but I am going to be doing that today. So we are going to actually start off with a simple water technique that everybody can do and you don't need any extra supplies. Okay, then we are going to step it up and again, add a little bit more to that watercolor technique. So it's going to be pretty cool today. I'm excited about this one. We're going to get a little bit messy because the one thing about um, working with water is you can never control it completely. Um, the great part of it is that it's always going to look amazing but it never looks the same, exactly the same, like twice. So you can do the exact same technique that I'm going to show you, and you can do it many times, but it'll always look ever so slightly different because you can't control how the water is going to blend your colors, okay? My voice is off, that's not good. I have got it in here as I am good with the, okay, can you? hear me can everybody else hear me give me a thumbs up if you can hear me i hope so sounds okay here good so maybe just check your settings christine okay so uh for those of you who have not joined me before I want to uh, welcome you. My name is Sue Phillip. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in beautiful Victoria, BC. We have got another hot day out there today. And um, I want to thank you for tuning in for my Sunday mornings, for my Thursday bright and early, for those of you who get up bright and early with me. So I, I do run uh, live videos on both YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, Sunday mornings at nine o'clock where you're going to get the step up design. I'm going to teach you some uh, simple and easy tips from taking cards that are nice and simple to stepping them up to a couple different levels. So we're going to make three cards today like always and we're going to step things up as we go. Okay, so that's what uh, Sunday is always about. Thursday morning 6.30 I hop on and I show you quick and easy layouts, quick and easy, quick and easy designs and that you can make cute cards in like five minutes or less right before I head to work, okay? Because I only got five minutes and I wanna show you that you can make some great cards before you go heading out the door, okay? Really quick, okay? So let's um, turn my camera down. I do have a current host code, as you guys always know, I've got a host code that is going and um, it gets you a free fun fold class if you place an order with me that is $50 or more. You have to, of course, be within Canada to shop with me and to get that, um, free class but uh it's always fun we usually make three cards and um using a special fold and like always i like to also give them away in different ways they're kind of like my appreciation um class so i do have one here of my july fun fold classes that i will be um giving away to someone who wants to share or tag a friend it always helps me out so i like to thank those who do that and i put you in a draw for a free fun fold class okay so i do have a couple draws that i do have to 
do. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that um, in a minute as I get started, but let's do this, shall we? Okay. So there I am up in the corner. Hello, everyone. I can keep my eye on everybody. All right, so I'm going to pull my camera out here a little bit wider, and I'm going to show you, first of all, where you can find this amazing bundle. So it is beautiful. Uh, lots of people are spending time at the beach on vacation. I thought this was fitting for July. Um, it's just got some beautiful tropical fish. We've got some greenery in here under the ocean, a little anchor, and it's just a really cute set the dyes are what really really blow it out of the water here literally literally <laughs> um but i wasn't planning on that one but uh you can see some great designs here uh that stampin up always has some great ideas in the book and then i am doing something totally totally different so i am bringing in some water i am going to bring in our water painters today uh, for our stepped up version i am going to do a very very simple easy water technique using a block which everybody has and i'm going to be using of course these amazing dyes that go along with this bundle okay and uh oh my goodness i could not one thing with watercolor is i may have a bit of a color palette today i've got a lot of colors i've got some coral colors of course for coral and i'm mixing that with a little bit of crushed curry you guys will see i've got an array of kind of blues and greens so we're gonna see how this all comes together and all blends together because watercolor is about kind of blending some fun colors together right there is there's no limits on what you can do so i want you guys to feel confident after today um to try some of this out and uh just play around with it because that's the fun of watercolor okay so I'm gonna start with just a very very easy um, card layout okay we are going to have a white card base I just have to see where I put my white card bases everyone Let's see. I'm not going to lie this last week has been a little bit crazy for me we have been Oh, there they are. They're all ready to go up there. I knew I had them. Um, we have been, um, I spend a lot of time up at my parents' place clearing out um, their home. It's sold, which is good, and they're, they're doing okay. They're doing pretty good where they are, but um, yeah, selling a house, clearing it out. Oh my goodness, they've been there 26 years for this one, this house, and uh, it's taking a little bit. Okay, so here is my basic white. I have got three and three quarters by five, okay? I am going to bring in, I'm just looking at all my different colors, and I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Coastal Cabana and Lost Lagoon and Balmy Blue. I think those are the colors that I'm going to go with, but no, I'm not. I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to do a little bit of Tahitian Tide because it's tropical, which is fitting, right? Okay. Are we ready to go? Let's do it. So for this very, very simple technique, all that you need is a source to spray some water. Okay. And by that, I mean, I have got um, one of these little uh, Stampin' Misters. You get two of them in a package. I think they're super reasonable. I'm just making sure this one doesn't have alcohol in it. I need water because I do have some that have alcohol, alcohol in them for alcohol techniques, but this one just has water, which is perfect. But all you need is some sort of um, water spritzer. I mean, you could easily use just a water mist, plant mister or whatever you've got in the house, but these are great to have on hand. And like I said, you get two of them for I think like five dollars so and they last you forever they just give a really great mist and you need a block 
I am going to be using here a size D block because that is the space of watercolor that I would like on my white piece of paper, okay? So you can use basically whatever color or whatever size block that you want. So if I wanted to do something smaller, I could do that. If I want to do something longer, I could do that too, right? I could do a long block of watercolor, okay? So you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, the shape is basically controlled by your block, okay? As much as it can be. All right, are we ready? So we're gonna take a ink pad. I am gonna start with the lightest color and I'm using this end of my ink pad that is closest to the edge, okay? I'm going to bounce a little bit of color on here, just like this, okay? And this color is the lightest and I want mostly this color on my block. You don't need to add a lot to your block and you can kind of see it more if I put it over top of the white paper. Can you see that okay? All right, then I'm gonna take a little bit of Lost Lagoon and just do like a little dab. That's it. So I always start with the lightest color and then I kind of go to the darker colors. And the re reason why I do that, see how I'm just bouncing and filling in a little bit of the space, is because I don't want to get the dark colors onto my ink pad if by accident I happen to touch the edge of it. Okay, now I don't need to fill the coloring completely because we're going to be adding a little bit of water, but you can see that I have got some beautiful kind of sea -y blue tropical colors there. Okay, all right, here we go. So to activate our water technique for this one, which is very quick and easy, like I said, you've got blocks, you've got ink pads, I'm sure you have something that you can use in the house to mist. A little bit of water but what we're gonna do is we're gonna just spray a couple squirts on here and I've got a little bit of extra protection on my work surface because I don't want to get it too wet for the next card making but you can see that I've got a little bit of water there I'm gonna spray a little bit more off to the side where I don't get my space okay so you can see how much it's pooling there all right a little bit of water running around Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put our piece of paper down, we're going to flip and squish, line it up where you want it, okay, and just basically squish her down. Look at that. Amazing, right? Looks so pretty. You can see it's all blended together. Now I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to pull it up nice and easy. Okay, I tend to pull from one side to the other. And this is the beautiful block of watercolor that you end up with. Not pretty. So, so easy for a nice um, clean or as clean as you can get using watercolor. Always, of course, have some paper towels ready to go because it can get a little bit messy. Okay, but what you can do is, and this is what I would suggest, is if you are going to do this technique and you're gonna make a little bit of a mess, I would cut definitely more than one um, piece of paper and I would go and play around with a whole bunch of different colors, wipe off your block. You might be able to spritz again and get a lighter version, but wipe off your blocks and play with some different color combinations and just do a whole bunch of backdrops like this, okay? And just do them all at the same time because then they're gonna need to dry, all right? But once they're dried, I've got a couple here and you can see how different the color looks, right? Between, I think this one had a little bit more Coastal Cabana in it and Tahitian Tide. This one I put in that Lost Lagoon in the middle. So you can see how even though I used all the same colors for all three of these, they all turned out slightly different, right? So that's what I mean about you can't control the water, but 
that's kind of the fun of it, I feel, right? So I'm going to stamp up a couple um, just so that you can see what they look like. And this is our simple design, right? So little block of color. This one's going to dry. And you may see that one finish off in a different way um, on one of my posts. So I'm just going to put it aside. Let me see where it's not going to get water everywhere. Perfect. Now, if you want to help it along and you're creating and, and you're like, oh, I just want to get to it, you can hit these papers with your water, with your heat tool. Okay. Um, with your, just put, keep it on low, your embossing, heat embossing tool, and uh, you'll be able to dry it out a little quicker. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in some of the stamps here and we're just going to do a very simple rest of the card. I'm going to bring in this gorgeous, gorgeous kind of kelp piece. This is so pretty. I want to use it on our stepped up design, I think, and this is gorgeous as well. So I'm going to just pull in just a couple pieces and we're going to stamp those over top. Okay. Because I want to show you that even though look at all these great pieces and again I haven't even stamped these yet I always love to do this with you guys so let's see we're going to use that one and we're going to use this one for sure and we need our little beautiful little fish because we need some fish going on right okay all right so let's take a larger block and we're going to I think use this one and I am just going to stamp this like this across this image. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to use, I got to decide which color to use. That's going to be the hardest part. It is going to be going over top. And I want to get this kelp down first before I put any fish in there because we're keeping this one dimensional and simple, right? Because this is our, just our simple design. So looking at what colors kelp could be we could go for our pretty peacock which is more of a greeny blue or we could go for our parakeet party now because we are just stamping over top i think that i'm going to go with a darker color just because i want to make sure that it shines all the way and it goes all the way through and really makes a statement um, for this all right in fact i may add a little bit of green throughout it with a little dauber. That's an idea. We could do that. Okay, so I'm going to ink this up. I want to see how dark this is going to be. So I'm going to stamp it once on my scrap here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at the detail. I just have to show you before we stamp it over top. Look at the detail in that stamp. It is gorgeous. It is beautiful. That was. Um, definitely one of the things that really did draw me to this stamp set and this bundle. Uh, I know that we have had other definitely C ones themes and we do have other C themes, but this kelp is amazing. So I'm going to go over top and I'm going to just press it down. So we are working now outside of our water circle or our water square, right? Look at that. Oh my gosh I love it I'm so excited because this is the first time I've stamped a stamp and I knew it would be gorgeous but oh my goodness I didn't know it was gonna be this gorgeous it's making me think of what I want to do on my stepped up cards now I might just switch it up a little on you guys you don't even know okay that is very very pretty right let me know what you think. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is, you know what, for this one, I don't think we need too much more. I could do a little tiny bit of this, but I think I'm gonna save this for my step dump, and I'm keeping it very simple. What do we think, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna do a couple gorgeous little fish. I'm gonna do this one, let's do it right here. So we've got our tropical fish. There's one. And again, I'm even though I stamped this water, it's more like a focal point, right? We're using this as a focal point rather than like a full watercolor wash. 
I'm using it as a beautiful wash of a block of color because we are in a tropical theme and I thought that it was perfect for this. I'm also doing two of the different ones that I um, made and the reason why I'm doing that, I just want to see, I think I'm going to do coral fish coral for the little tiny fish is because I want you guys to see at the end that even though I'm stamping things in the same thing fish in parakeet for tropical fish <gasps> you know what I will try it I will try the parakeet part I hope that it stands out on we'll do it on one that's a great idea okay and we'll do it on one I have to watch because I now have ink on my finger and I don't want it on my card so I'm going to do one tropical fish and we will do it in the parakeet. Oh, that is quite cute. Yes, you can still see it. Love it. It's nice and subtle. So I'm going to do one down here too. Okay, so little fish just swimming around. Okay, and little parakeet color. That's beautiful. Okay, now what we're going to do next is we're just going to finish this off with a little bit of embellishments and a greeting. And I mean, that is all you need. It is so pretty, right? So let's bring in um, a greeting. It's, I'm going to put one that's down here. I'm going to draw it actually from uh, this one here. So this is, of course, another beautiful ocean themed stamp set that we have waves of inspiration comes with i'm just going to pull this out a little bit comes with um gorgeous dies that make a big huge um kind of detailed wave that you lay over top of this stamp and i did a whole class on this one quite a while back when it came out and uh yeah it's beautiful no i want the you're so totally awesome that's what i want you're so totally awesome and I think I will end up pulling it. Uh, let's see here. Our friendship is a thing of beauty. Oh, that's quite nice too, isn't it? I might just put that one across one of them. Okay, making a lot of noise here with my cases. Okay, so I'm going to do the You Are Totally Awesome. And I'm going to do it just in the black. I just want to make sure my stamp is nice and straight. And I'm going to do it right here. Right over. I'm going to do it off to the side because of our gorgeous kelp there. Look at that. See how pretty that is? Simple, right? Sometimes you don't have to do too much to make a card beautiful. And like I said, if you go and do a whole bunch of these color blocks, um, make sure this one's straight. A whole bunch of these color blocks ahead of time um, then yeah that's pretty good then you'll be able to just have fun with stamping over top of them using dies as well over top of them we're going to do something similar in, in a few minutes okay all right so that even though I tried that's totally crooked and I can't have that so I'm gonna do it's okay I'm going to bring in just a scrap piece, right? We have these scraps for a reason. I think it's my stamp that I may have put the sticker on crooked. Nope, that's actually pretty good there. And I'm just going to lay it over top when we put our card together. Okay. All right. So let's finish off these simple designs. And then we will get on to a more stepped up watercolor technique. Okay. So we're just doing a little white on white beautiful nice and clean with our tropical colors and I'm just going to add a little bit of kind of clear pearl like accents to it so I have a couple choices I've got iridescent pearls which are beautiful I've got the um, iridescent rhinestones and then the opal rounds are quite pretty as well it's almost like treasure that's underneath the ocean there so I'm gonna I might do a different one on each card so we can see how those look but I think they're all gonna look really really pretty let's add some dimension to our card by bringing this in 
Now, has anyone tried the watercolor technique just with your blocks? If you have color with blends, yes. I'm gonna do that on my next one. Um, if you have tried it before, let me know. If you haven't, oh, I got, <gasps> look what I did. I got ink on there. See, where did that come from? Oh my goodness. I have a mess this morning, aren't I? I'm gonna spray a little water. Got a little water here. We'll try and get rid of it there. It's everywhere. I'm gonna to have to be careful. Be careful with uh, <laughs> my next cards. That's okay because I will think of something to do there. I'm not sure what. Maybe put a little fish. That would be cute. But there is that one. Let's just quickly, we can put this one. I'm gonna show you how I would put this one together. I would pop this out a little bit and I'll do this when I finish it and I put it online. And that way this would be pop popped out as well as this and we'll put our embellishments on it, okay? So let's imagine and let's see which embellishments we're gonna use. I think I'm gonna go for this one. Oh, I'm glad you're gonna try it. Some of you are gonna give this a whirl. So I'm gonna use, these are perfect, iridescent rhinestones. They, bring, they kind of pick up the colors that you're using, which I love. I'm going to put one right down here. One, two, three, and one in our kelp, I think. And again, one, two, and a larger one down here. Okay? So simple, but pretty. Okay? There's our first design okay and our first simple watercolor now let's step it up a little bit more I'm going to put this one to the side and I'm going to get messy again with some watercolor okay I'm going to now work with this is the um, fluid 100 watercolor paper and um, it's 100% cotton so this is what we do have in the catalog and the sheets here you get 10 of them they're five by seven so I'm gonna go ahead and I cut one in half but I'm actually going to cut it down even a little bit more than this so I'm gonna get my paper cutter and I'm gonna cut it down to three inches okay so there's my three inch piece all right now what I'm gonna do I just had to let my our little old man Fonzie get up the stairs there he was whining okay now I know what I hit my finger on Okay, so for the next technique, we're going to bring in our watercolor brushes, so the water painters, and we are going to use a block as a palette, okay? Now, some of you will squish your ink pads and have the, the ink in here, and then you pick it up. Now, I used to do that, but I was starting to find that sometimes it ended up um, affecting water would end up getting onto the actual ink pad which affected the ink pad so what I recommend instead is you go ahead and you take the colors that you're going to use so I have got um, coastal cabana I have got pretty peacock I have this new gorgeous blue as as your as your afternoon I think how you pronounce it I never know I'm going to put that there so isn't that a gorgeous color and then I'm going to bring in Tahitian Tide again and I'm going to put that one on this this color uh, corner okay now because I've done one of these and you can see I've used a little bit of the color this is dried now so it's okay for me to add a little bit more Coastal Cabana there okay so these are going to be the colors that I'm going to use for my next watercolor technique. I am going to take this card and I'm going to put it aside here before I get even more inky fingers all over it. Okay, and I'm going to bring in 
um, one of the watercolor painters, the water painters. They come in packs of three and we have a smaller, a smaller tip, like a fine one. We have got more of a paint brush. And then we've got this one here, which is the wide brush. And I love this, okay? You fill them with water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna squeeze it. It's going to make some water go down and go into the brush, okay? Then I'm gonna drop it onto the block and I'm gonna start swirling it around, okay? So I'm now creating my watercolor okay i'm going to take this and you got to make sure you're using quite a bit of water and i'm just going to brush it onto my watercolor paper look at that it's like it's like magic it's so much fun now i'm going to go and i'm going to pull in another color and this is the azure afternoon and I'm just kind of brushing it and brushing it back and forth. I'm, I'm doing like a wave of different colors here. Okay. I'm gonna take some Tahitian Tide, maybe add this over here. All right, make sure you have enough water, give it a squeeze and add some water. Like I have quite a bit here. Now this Coastal Cabana is gonna be my fill-in color because it's nice and light. And I can run and fill in all of my spots. Again, making sure I have enough water on my brush. I'm continually squeezing that brush to make sure that I do have the water that I want on there, okay? Now I'm gonna go back to some of these darker colors and I'm gonna go kind of around the edges. I love this color for the edge. Okay, and I'm gonna pull in. So I'm kind of going lighter to darker. And I do have, squeeze some more water here. I do have some of these done already because it is watercolor paper. And again, this is something that you could go ahead and do a few of these. Cut up your, um, watercolor paper and do a few of them and then you have them ready to go okay so there is my watercolor wash isn't that pretty and i've got all the different colors all across the paper okay i'm going to put that aside i'm going to also show you another color combination that i am using so I'm going to get on another sheet here of the watercolor paper and I'm just going to cut it down a couple inches for this one. Okay. And I'm going to make some, um, a little bit of a wash using the corals color, so Calypso Coral and the yellow. Okay, so I'm going to take my big, this is my water block, and I'm just going to rinse this off, and all is good. Okay, I might keep it aside to make a color more, a couple more backgrounds while I have all the colors here, and then put them aside to dry, right? You might as well use it up. Okay, get that mess out of the way. Now I'm getting messy with the coral and the yellows. So I can do the same thing. I'm gonna squish the water down my brush and I'm just going to run it onto a paper towel. And this is going to, it's gonna, your bristles may get a little dyed, that happens, right? With any, um, your blending brushes, your bristles, all that sort of stuff, but just run it till it's fairly clear and then you're good to go with different colors. So I'm gonna bring in now and I'm gonna do, um, Instead of kind of a stripey motion, I am just going to kind of paint and swirl a little bit of this coral color about, and I'm gonna do the same with the yellow, okay? So do you remember all those gorgeous die cuts that I, I showed you? They are gonna come into play. I'm just doing all of my messy water coloring um, 
demonstration here because this is going to be for our last very stepped up card but I want to um, do this now because I want to get rid of all the wetness in my area before we put our cards together okay so you can swish it around again I'm going to add a little bit more water come on drip on down there we go we're going to swish and we're going to swirl a little bit okay just because I want the colors to be kind of more swirled than striped for this okay so now I've got this gorgeous blend of yellows and oranges which I can cut out some coral pieces from okay and it'll have that nice variation in color okay so I'm going to put that one aside and those will dry those will be my next cards that I make and I'll post the samples okay so I'm going to take this block I'm going to put that aside and I am going to get a nice clean surface okay there we go all right so I have gone ahead let some dry let's put all the water aside and get that out of the way and here are two of the samples aren't those pretty okay so we have got all of our blends I'm watching my fingers here we have got all the blends on there and now we have got this really cool blank canvas of washes of blue for an ocean theme okay so I'm going to start with um, using this one now and now we're going to do some stamping over top so we are stepping it up a little bit we stepped it up with definitely the watercolor technique and I'm going to give you guys a lot of different ideas to walk away with today that's for sure but I think that um, it's definitely something whoop, that out of there now I got green on my fingers it's definitely something that you can have some fun with and just explore using your watercolor okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just stamp a little bit of parakeet party I'm gonna get some darker colors too but I'm just stamping again just a little bit of a backdrop for our cards now these are the second and the third card so I'm just going to add to them a little bit to make them a little bit more stepped in a minute so you can see just a little bit of greenery there okay so there's those ones now I'm going to pull in let's see the other stamps that we have got because we have got some beautiful stamps in here we have got this gorgeous coral piece so we're just going to do a little bit of stamping in the backdrop and I think I'm going to go in with this one and another block and we're going to do this one just in the calypso coral okay so let's stamp it see what it's going to look like oh I love it it's got again that little variation in color and this coral beautiful 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 I'm gonna leave this one because I think I'm gonna put kelp across this card um, this one we're gonna do more coral okay so I'm starting off I've got a little bit of a backdrop there I'm gonna maybe add a little bit more here just coming up this side like that doesn't it look beautiful when it bounces off that watercolor backdrop now you do want to make sure that um, you end up making sure that your watercolor paper is dry so again I ended up using a little bit extra of um, using the heat gun to heat and get all the extra moisture out so even though I let it dry I ended up going in with a little bit of a heat tool at the end just to make sure it was dry especially for a technique that I'm going to do in a minute with this card 
with our last one. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit of that kelp. Okay, now when we step up a card, what do we add? Well, we did a different wash in the background, but I'm also going to bring in a couple die cuts. Okay, so instead of stamping our fish directly onto our paper, we're going to pop them out a little bit. Uh, I want to show you that this is the sample of what I did before with all the colors, with the yellows and the corals, and it's very pretty. You can see that I have cut out some coral, and now you can see what that coral looks like. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Okay, so when you cut from your watercolor pieces, you get that gorgeous variation that you would have. Look at that when it bounces off the paper. You get that variation, right? So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to do the lighter one. I think I'm going to save this darker one because we're going to do a little uh, embossing on the next. And I'm going to take this little tiny bit of dots now these little dots here can be a few different things okay you can add um, a little bit of dabbing of color over top because some coral has spots on it right so i'm going to add a little bit of extra dotting on top it can also be bubbles from the fish um, or it can just be it could be sand on the bottom so you can look at these pieces and think of different ways in which you can use them so I'm going to add a little bit of um, just a little bit of coral spots on here just to, let's see how dark they are. Oh yeah, this is going to be cool. So I'm just going to stamp it over top of the coral and it's going to give that look. So we have the variation in color, but see how it kind of gives that little speckled look that you see when you know you, you're if you've had a chance to do some scuba scuba diving or um, snorkeling at all you can see that there's some different colors and some kind of marks on the coral so that just kind of makes it a little bit more come to life with those spots okay now i've also pulled in let me see here I've got a couple happy little fish here that I've already cut out. So I'm gonna put those into our little pitcher and I'm gonna bring in a card base, okay? So cute. So this is going to go on top of here like so. Now what we can do also in our backdrop here is we can add a little bit of that parakeet party and we can add this little kelp in here too okay just to add a little bit of interest bringing our little ocean onto our card base okay so I'm just gonna just put a little bit on there and then when we put this over top, we have that little bit of coral, okay? I'm gonna pop this out and then we are gonna put our other pieces over top of it. Now, this card idea I got from um, someone who was a demonstrator who was on the artisan team last year and the year before. Um, her name is uh, Tammy Hewlett and I saw this idea with a watercolor brush um, on the artisan page and it was it was beautiful. I am off on my stamping and my putting my papers down this morning. There we go. It's because I haven't had any coffee yet. There, okay. Then we're gonna put this down. Oh my goodness, I love how that looks. So beautiful. But yeah, she had this watercolor look and it looked so pretty that I thought I have to give that a try. So 
you know, don't be afraid to try these ideas because you really will be amazed how beautiful they end up turning out. Okay, I'm going to put that there. So pretty. A little bit of glue on there. And another reason why you want to make sure that your watercolor stuff is set before you start adding things to your page is because if it's not quite set, then it makes it hard for things to um, glue down as well. Okay, now we're going to pop out some fish. Like this. And these guys are just going to go like that. So cute. Now you might wonder how I got the um, two-tone in the fish. I better show you just quickly. I'll just stamp it on my um, page here on this scrap right here. So all I did was I started with a lighter color, which is the crushed curry. Okay, stamp my fish, then tapped it just a little bit onto the Calypso Coral, took a little sponge dauber, and just pounced it on there a little bit. It blends it all together. Okay, so there you can have some variation and you don't have um, it all looking like there's a line on your fish, right? You want it to kind of blend a little bit. So there you go, another tip for for blending. I did it with the, um, the tropical birds um, on one of my lives. And let's see, I'm going to put this fish over here. And it worked really well. So, okay, so there we've got some fish. We've got our watercolor. And now I'm going to just put a little quick greeting on here. And that will be the finish off of this card. So let's just do, I think, a little happy birthday. And I've got, let's see, I'm going to do, I think, just, again, black will be perfect and I'm going to take it from the waves of inspiration because this is just a nice fine happy birthday and we're going to do it in black okay there we go now for this last card I'm going to add that big huge kelp back in and um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I hope it turns out because, again, I have not tried it yet. Um, but I think it's going to look beautiful. I'm going to tear the edges of this. And I'm just going to lay this down just like so across our page. Okay, We don't have to be too fancy. We've got so much going on here. I think this looks really pretty. And I'm going to put the little put it by the fish there like that and then I'm going to add just some iridescent rhinestones to add a little sparkle we're going to do five little ones on here one two three four and we will do one right there okay so there is our watered background, our water color background with the brush. And we've got the kelp that we have punched out as well. And our little pounced little tropical fish. This one I did color with the blends. Added a little yellow on there. Okay. So there is card number two. So we've got card number one, card number two. Okay. Now we're going for our last card. And this one. I want to add this beautiful kelp in the background. So I need to um, get this color out of here because I'm going to do a little bit of heat emboss for this one. And I'm gonna do a little bit of heat emboss on some vellum as well. So I think this card is going to the next level for sure. So let's take a little bit of vellum and we're going to get our embossing done first. I have the heat tool ready. Um, we're going to use white embossing powder and uh, yeah, this is going to look really cool with it. So I'm going to take 
my Versamark and my powder and I'm going to um, get my heat tool ready. So I always have my heat tool ready to go in my workspace. It's always cl close by. I have got my tub of my white embossing powder and I've got my Versamark. Okay, so our first thing that we're going to stamp on is going to be the vellum and I'm going to use, let's see here, I'm just going to just stamp that off a little bit. I'm going to use this long kelp piece. Okay, I'm going to stamp it onto my vellum. Now when stamping on vellum, you need to make sure that um, you don't move your page at all and you have to make sure that when you're stamping you keep your stamps going straight down and straight up you do not want any wiggle at all because it will cause a smudge surface because we are working with vellum which is very slippery okay now I'm gonna dip this into my white bucket here Go. This is going to look gorgeous. Okay, look at that. It's going to look amazing because it's going to shine. The colors are going to shine right through it when we put it on the card. I'm going to use the um, our heat tool at the lowest setting here. I'm going to heat it up first. Get it going. And then I'm going to bring it back because we don't want to warp the paper. Um, there's also the technique where you could put aluminum foil underneath it. That just makes it heat really, really quickly. But this is going to go in a second. Here we go. Come on. There we go. So this is going to heat through. Just takes a second. It's going now. And I'm going to do um, a gorgeous emboss on our watercolor backdrop using white embossing powder with our kelp and we're going to see how that looks so I think that will look gorgeous okay. so we're going to have a few layers for this card we're going to have our fish we're going to have our um, coral which is going to look beautiful and then we're going to have that gorgeous kelp and this long kind of kelpy stuff too, but it's going to be see-through with the vellum. Okay, so those are those. I will cut them out in a moment. I'll quickly do a cut, um, but first I want to get that gorgeous kelp done on here okay all right so i'm going to bring in my versamark again and my versamark has taken a lot of beating here so i'm just gonna i have one that i use and i don't worry if ink gets on it there we go and then i have my brand new one that i use for nice clean stamping all right so i'm going to put this i think right here Press it down. Okay, now we're going to bring in our powder again and we're going to do this kelp here in the white. Now I saw a card that was done and it had, oh, this is going to look amazing. It had um, just a blue card base and then it had this kelp and it was done in white and it looked stunning so that's where I got this idea to kind of just do this in white and see what it looks like I can pop up the heat here see what it looks like when it's done and the blue you get to see through it look at that oh my goodness so pretty you can see all that detail embossed it looks gorgeous. Okay. 
All right, I love it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Okay, so we have got our kelp on there. We've got a little bit of stamping that we started off with, right? But we have got that looks very beautiful. It's going to look really cool when we add, of course, this over top of it. And you can see how we're really starting to add a few layers that, you know, you wouldn't have seen on just a regular card. I'm also going to add a few little um, bubbles for our fish. So to do that, I have to kind of estimate where my fish are going to go. I know I'm going to have some up in this corner here. So I'm going to just do a couple little bubbles there and one right there. And again, I'm going to just add the powder to those bubbles. And that way they're going to show up on our card. Okay. So there, those bubbles are coming out. Just like that. Okay. See that? All the little things they all add up and like I said you don't have to do all of this because this is a lot to one card but you can take bits and pieces of it right that's what I want you to do is take bits and pieces and definitely uh, make it your own I'm gonna do a little bit of this kind of darker color in here as well like that and I am stamping right over top of where we put that white embossing but that's okay because now I can take my piece of paper and I can just wipe the surface of it because any ink that is sitting on the surface of where you embossed it wipes off so now you can see it's like it drops into the background see that little trick okay Lots of tips. Okay, so let's do, I do want to, to emboss or cut out um, that one clear piece of kelp. So I am gonna bring in that vellum and we are going to cut those out because I think they're gonna look beautiful on this page. I'm just tearing my vellum here a little bit. Okay, there. Let's bring that in. And I'm going to do at least one. You can probably break it up and use one piece. I may use both. We'll see. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this over top. Let's get our other plate in here. And then we're going to run it through. Okay. see what this looks like oh yeah see look at that isn't that pretty beautiful okay now let's do one more now I am going to do a I'm going to give away in the comments today um, just a little comment prize because I think that that a good idea let me see there's our other beauty oh my gosh this is gonna look so good so good okay and uh, as for the actual kits this is where I have to tell you like I said I've been up at my um, my mom's a fair amount pretty much well every day and long days and so I did not get all the names put into my little bucket for all of the different days for the draws but I want you to know that what I do is I end up writing on the top of the packages um, the date so that I know like this will be for July the 13th winter so I will go back um, over the next the, the past week and I will start adding those in and then I will do today's as well and we can um, I'll pop in sometime midweek and I'll just do a whole set 
of draws. And I'll probably create something too, just because I'm, I'll be there, right? I might as well. Okay, so let's need, I need a card base. This is what I meant. Okay, let's bring in our card base. Oh my goodness, this is gonna look beautiful. Love that kelp. We are going to add this in. Now we wanna stamp a little bit in the backdrop with our big piece of kelp here. Okay, and we're gonna do it in the green. So let's go for it. I'm gonna add just a little bit, just to keep things the same as last time. Now, are you guys falling in love with this set and this and the big piece of kelp? Oh my goodness, like I am. So beautiful. Okay, I'm done with my embossing. Let's put a lid on the powder, shall we? Because we know how the ink is going all over my fingers. The last thing that I need is powder all over my surface. That's why I put them in those big buckets, because I find so much easier. Okay, so look at how gorgeous that is. Really pretty, right? The, it is, it's stunning. It makes a big, huge difference. So that's another thing, um, just embossing some beautiful images and vellum and layering them over top of a watercolor surface. I'm gonna just show you something just because we can. Like look at just, this is a watercolor surface. Look at how the white vellum, embossed white on the vellum, see how it just looks so pretty. So it doesn't matter, think of it with many, many other um, stamps that you have. It doesn't have to be an ocean theme, but how pretty that would be, or black embossed on vellum, and have like a silhouette and a sunset, maybe reds, pinks, oranges. Ooh. Whew, that's a whole other session, everyone. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get back to the ocean, shall we? We're almost there. We're almost on our last card. We're gonna put this down. And I'm gonna layer this. I'm go not gonna cut it either. I'm just gonna layer this on top like so because it's gonna go over top just like um, the other seaweed is that's green. Now I will get away with adding a little bit of dimension on the top and the bottom because the dimensionals are also white. So that's gonna allow me to get away with that a little bit. Let's see, you don't even really notice them because we have so much detail on the white embossing. And then I am going to just use um, one little glue dot right in the center that's going to tack it down in the middle. Okay, I think we're ready to go there, yeah. So I'm gonna tuck this here and there, and we're just gonna have that going up over top. So pretty. We've got another piece here, and what I think I'm gonna do is, wait for it, here we go. Oop, I got two now. I'm gonna add this one over here, because that is beautiful, right where it is. Just to add a little bit of detail of that um, white embossing there. And then again, I'll probably do this one right beside this one. So it's sitting like it's meant to be and add a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna tuck it kind of underneath that leaf and we're going like that, okay? Okay, now we're gonna add the things that we had on our original second card, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of speckling to our Help. Okay, so speckling, bubbles. Remember, those little dots are what you want it to be. So just get creative with them. I have to actually find them on my workspace. They're right in front of me. Say, open your eyes, Sue. They're right in front of you. I'm just so excited about how I envision this turning out that it's hard to keep track of things. Okay. Oh, yes. Beautiful, okay. I think I'm gonna attach even the coral with these glue dots. They seem to be adhering a bit easier than liquid glue. And you have a couple spots there that you can definitely stick the glue dots into that are big enough. One over here, 
Okay, let's put down. Look at how it overlays the vellum and that white kelp. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. I have a little extra, a little bit extra kelp because there's a couple other pieces. And then look at this. I mean, you could get creative with these. These were the pieces because you did this gorgeous watercolor wash and you ran it through the die cut machine, right? See that? You end up with all of these pieces that actually come out of in between. So if you wanted to, you could use these for pieces of coral along your card as well, or you could put them just inside the card. So when someone opens it up, they get a nice surprise, but it does have this little tiny piece of kelp as an actual die cut as well. So it has three different pieces. So I think, I don't know if I want this tall one. I think I want just a little tiny piece down here that I'm going to add. I don't think I want that tall one. Decided against it for now. I think I would do it in a different color, maybe like it was a different type of kelp. And I'm going to put that one off the edge. All right, now we're ready to cue our fish. Okay, let's see, we got a few in here to put on and we'll put our embellishments. So you don't really need ribbon on a card like this because you've got so many other beautiful elements, you don't need it. I'm gonna put um, my tropical fish right here. Okay, and I might even tuck his tail. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tuck his tail a bit underneath the vellum and I want him to be back enough. I'm going to put his fin over top and that part underneath and we got our bubbles right there. So that's where that one's coming out of. Okay, and then these cuties, they're going to be right here like that. Okay, and again, I'm going to pop them out and then we're going to do a little greeting. Now what I thought about doing for this one, just to switch it up a little bit, was to stamp the happy birthday right on the card. But you know what? The way that my fingers are going with all of the ink and stuff today, I am worried that, of course, it would not go perfect, and then I would be really sad. So instead, I'm gonna use a die cut, okay? And I'm gonna use, let's see, Let's see what I got. I'm going to use this one because I've got it. So I'm just going to use this one here and I'm going to curb it a little bit. Okay, so it'll have like a little wave in there and it'll be a nice little detail of the stitching. Okay, I'm going to put a happy birthday on here. And we are almost done with our Sunday morning step up watercolor, right? Okay, let's make sure I do it straight. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's do a little curve. And let's put it right there. So to keep it curved, you just have to pop naturally with the way your curve is. So I'm doing a pop there and I'm doing a pop doubled at the top of my curve. Okay, and that's gonna make it so that our little wave part is going to stay on our card because it's gonna pop right there and pin down there. Okay, let's get it straight. There we have it. Okay, all we need now, embellishments. But first, before I do that, we are gonna give these away. These are the fine sparkled adhesive back gems. And I think these would look beautiful in an ocean theme. Look at all the colors are perfect. So that's why I thought I'd pull these ones out today. And I'm gonna give them two. It's gonna be a quick draw. We are gonna go comment number five, starting right now, ladies. So, and gentlemen, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28,
Pat starting us off. Kathy two. Let's see. Do we have any more comments? Three, four. Come on, I need one more. Lots of blues and greens. Yes, this is perfect for it, right? Oh, oh my goodness, I had a whole bunch there. Vivian, looks like Vivian, you popped in there just in time. So you have got these embellishments that you will be able to use for your little under the sea theme when you try it out. Okay. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, we've got this, right? We did block technique water okay so if you're just tuning in and you missed it well my name is Sue Phillip I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Victoria BC and today we stepped it up with water techniques so we started with a block just a water block so if you want to know how to do that just watch the beginning of the video really simple okay and then we did our wash with all of our colors using a big remember to to use one of your other, other blocks. Doesn't matter what size it is, but use your blocks as your water palette rather than the inside of your ink pads, okay? I just don't want you to get ink. Oh my goodness, talking about ink. I don't want you to get ink um, on your actual pads, okay? Because it can cause some issues. Get some moisture in there that you don't want, okay? So put it on your blocks, just dab it on there and use that as your palette, all right? And we did our wash. We also did a wash for our coral, which we cut out. See, I get to make a whole other set of cards. I got all these pieces, okay? And then we stepped it up for our last one. We did some embossing with that kelp, embossing with this long, tall um, seaweedy kelp, and we did some little bubbles on there, okay? A little die cut for our greeting. Whew, that step up took a while, but I hope that there was a ton of tips um, that you learned from that. And I hope you guys really do try the watercolor technique. If you're going to do something like this, you definitely want to have um, a watercolor paper. So we do have our Fluid 100 watercolor paper uh, in the catalog. You get 10 sheets, which would give you um, 20 card fronts like this so you can do a lot with it okay all right so enjoy i'm gonna put you back here let's see say my goodbyes there we are okay so again i apologize that i did not have all those names in the draws but don't you worry i will come on and i will do a draw for last sunday um the past thursday and for today and it is for anyone who happened to um, share or tag a friend and you will be getting one of my um, fun fold card kits for this one which was for the people who placed orders in june um, it goes out in july and i'll just show you what the fold is it's very cool this is the fold here okay so there is three different cards in that kit so you may want to um, share or tag a friend because you will get a full instructional video and all of these pieces oh i'm going the wrong way all of these pieces will be pre-cut for you and ready to go in your kit uh, i send you the video and then you just create along using the stamp sets and the inks that you have and your own adhesives okay all right, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See you some point. I will make an announcement so that you guys know when I'm doing the draws. Um, I have one other cute little idea I wanna do with the stamp set. So I will probably do one quick little project with it um, when I do those draws. And then I will see you again Thursday morning, 6.30 in the morning if you want to join me bright and early or catch the replay. It's okay if you sleep in. Sometimes you need the sleep, right? But I will be making a quick, easy card you can make in five minutes and fly out the door like I will be doing just before work, okay? All right, take care, care everyone. And uh, like I said, enjoy your Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.